our top story today. Tata-owned Big Basket is set to become a full-scale quick commerce platform as the sector sees rising demand for rapid deliveries. The e-grocer is seeing over 50% sales from the quick vertical segment and in the coming weeks will only offer 10-minute delivery service. To elaborate on what prompted the change in strategy and the future roadmap, I have with me the founder of Big Basket, Hari Menon. Hari, welcome to Startup Street. First, tell us, you know, what prompted Big Basket to make the significant shift towards uh, becoming a fully-fledged quick commerce platform after so many years in e-grocery. You started in 2011 and have seen several cycles of hyper-funded grocery models emerge during the past decade. Uh, don't you think you're late to the party? Actually, uh, you know, let me just clarify that, you know, it's not that, you know, it's we are moving fully um, into, the, into a quick commerce platform, but it will be largely be uh, the quick commerce platform. If you see Big Basket today, we actually have two offerings that we that we have on the app. Yeah, you have something called Super Saver, which is our slotted uh, delivery option, and then you have BB Now, which is our quick quick service um, um, quick commerce option. So what we're essentially doing is basically bringing both these together into one interface. And so now, when you click on BB, you will not see two interfaces or two doors. You will see only one interface, and that one interface will essentially carry the entire range of 30,000 products, which was available on both these platforms and both these offerings on one interface. So we'll, we'll have quick commerce now as a, as a, as a offering for about 30,000 SKUs. Um, and the default option for the customer is quick commerce, which means that they get a choice of selecting anything in, from this 30,000 products and get delivered in 10 minutes. However, we also have the option of slots, which the customer can then choose if they want uh, a, slotted a slotted delivery and they want some convenient slots later in the day or the next day, they can even do that. But the default option is, is quick commerce. So that's what we're doing. So it's not about uh, being, being uh, early or late to the party. It's just that we are bringing two interfaces uh, and two of our businesses which were running um, you know, as separate interfaces, bringing it into one piece and putting it all together. So everything will be available. Uh, 30,000 products will be available um, uh, to be delivered in 10 minutes now. All right. So you've merged the two businesses into a single interface now, and quick commerce seems to be the default option. But sir, tell us, despite entering the quick commerce space relatively late, BB now is generating over 50% of sales from this vertical. If you could confirm this, and how did this shift happen? Yeah, essentially, we, have, we, were, we were seeing over a period of time that customers um, are getting more and more comfortable with quicker deliveries. Uh, and hence, that was one of the reasons that we started moving uh, a lot towards delivering fast. If you recollect, you know, even our even our slotted delivery, which was typically in the past used to be same day, next day delivery, we had moved it to a two hour uh, solution, and that and that customers really were happy about and lapped it up. So essentially, we were seeing, um, you know, uh, a very strong movement of customer preference uh, to to quick deliveries, and that's what that's what really prompted it. There was no urgency and no hurry for us to get into that business because we had a, a, a running business already available and uh, it was a very large business and a profitable business. And so we so we were waiting to see what customer response would be to, uh, to the quick commerce offering. We found customers were actually lapping it up and hence we decided to um, uh, to, to, to give it a push and really uh, really get that offering you know um, out to customers there. And now we are actually trying to put both together so that customers get a large uh, the benefit of both the businesses um, uh, in ten minutes. So so how do you build on this? What kind of investments are you looking to make? So we are essentially investing into um, into creating the, um, uh, the the dark store infrastructure. Um, we currently have um, upwards of about 400 plus dark stores. We are enhancing that to about 700 dark stores now. And these dark stores now, we are also enhancing capacity within these dark stores, which were earlier carrying 10,000 products, which we were delivering in 10 minutes, to now 30,000 products. So we are enhancing capacity in each dark stores, and we are also investing into adding the count of dark stores and moving to, to upwards of 700 dark stores now from 400. Like I mentioned earlier, you're currently seeing over 50% sales from the quick vertical, which has 10 to 30 minute delivery. Uh, what is the kind of growth you expect in the coming months as you completely switch to the fast delivery vertical? So we are the quick the quick commerce business, which is BB now, has been over the last many quarters growing at upwards of 20 to 25 percent, um, you know, quarter on quarter. 
and that's the growth we are seeing. I think we'll sustain that growth, which is a very, very healthy growth. Um, both these businesses together, um, you know, we were we are we are expecting to do close to about um, a billion and a half to two billion dollars, uh, somewhere in between that this year, and that will essentially come largely now uh, from the quick commerce business. Um, this quick commerce business was earlier contributing 20-30%. It's now up to 50%. And I suspect that this will go up to anywhere between 65 and 70% as we as we, as we go forward. So a good part of the $1.5 billion um, to $2 billion that we'll do this year will come uh, from quick commerce, which is about 65 to 70%. 65 to 70%, that's a good number. Uh, but tell us what kind of sales this makeover is expected to bring in for Big Basket this financial year. If you could share more details, in fact, on the strategies that will drive this growth that you're saying. So essentially, it's, 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 it's essentially we're just riding on the fact that, um, you know, a lot of new customers are coming in now um, into the grocery business. And a lot of young customers are coming into the grocery business. And, and that's that's where you see a, see a lot of traction as far as quick commerce is concerned. So, so our, our, our strategy is going to be to essentially, uh, you know, uh, do targeted marketing to get this set of new customers uh, who are now coming onto quick commerce platforms. That's what we're going to do. And that's what's going to get us to our, uh, to our targeted uh, number of, of close to uh, one and a half to two billion dollars this year. Okay, now let's talk about the competitive landscape. How will Big Basket differentiate itself from the established quick commerce players like Swiggy, Instamart, Blinkit and Zepto, especially with the increasing competition and capital infusion in this space? What market share are you looking to carve out in the medium term? See, I, I, I think what differentiates us is the, is the power of the brand. We've been in this business for, for, uh, for upwards of 14 years now. And we understand, uh, you know, the back end, the supply chain, the logistics, um, you know, very, very well. And we've done this for very long. And I think our ability to, to essentially be consistent and deliver consistently, deliver good, high-quality products is something that uh, that we are going to continuously do, keep doing. And that's what I think will differentiate us. Um, uh, you know, we have, a, we, have, we have a great brand and customers just love us for, um, for what we do. Um, and so that's what will keep us going. Okay, but, you know, how about, how do you plan to manage logistics and inventory challenges that come with rapid expansion? And are you looking to raise funds to fuel these plans? You know, Shruti, this is this is something that that we've been doing, as, like I said before, for 14 years, and we're very comfortable with, with managing complex, you know, inventory stacks that, that we've been having, which includes uh, perishable products, which includes low, sh low shelf life products, which includes milk, it includes dairy. So we've been doing this for 14 years. So I think I think our ability to manage complexity as far as grocery is concerned uh, is not a concern at all because that's something that we started doing and uh, and pretty much mastered that you know that piece. So we are quite so we are quite comfortable and not worried at all uh, you know from uh, from that perspective. Um, uh, we are going to expand dark stores and hence get us a greater reach uh, as, as we go forward. All we need to do is make sure that one of the critical things for for the quick commerce business to uh, to become profitable and make money is basically density of every dark store and the throughput of orders in every dark store and that's what we are going to focus on and we'll spend uh, marketing dollars to make sure that we we get the required number of customers for that to happen okay so the focus will be on the density of orders but tell us how will this shift impact big baskets overall profitability if you could elaborate on how you plan to maintain profitability while blurring the lines between e-commerce and quick commerce what kind of cash burn are we looking at no so we are uh, you know our, uh, our our slotted business has been a profitable business you know for us for quite some time our our um, our uh, you know bb daily which is a subscription business uh, has been profitable for quite some time. It's just that the the, the quick commerce piece uh, it needs a little more time for us to for us to get to profitability. But I think the the benefit we have is that our backend infrastructure um, is leveraged across multiple businesses, and hence you know the 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 possibility for us to turn around and uh, and become profitable uh, is a lot lot easier and lot lot faster. And we see that in the next six to eight months, I think everything will start becoming profitable. Okay. Uh, like you mentioned earlier that, you know, you're going to enhance your SQs uh, from 10,000 to 30,000 and your dark store network from 400 to 700. Uh, but, you know, if you could tell us what categories or products do you plan to expand into and how will this affect your supply chain? 
so this is where we are uh, we are we are making a, a small change earlier we were we were primarily groceries um, um, and we were primarily personal care and we were primarily beauty and we are primarily you know general merchandise now we expect that all these categories uh, will contribute maybe about 50 to 60% of our sales will still be very very grocery driven because that's what we understand better and and, and do well uh, we've added significantly to uh, new categories that have that have come on board which includes uh, toys board games uh, sports uh, uh, products uh, sporting products um, uh, you know a whole lot of electronics and accessories etc and we'll keep enhancing and keep doing this uh, as we go along so so what used to be 100% of our business will now will now be i think going forward 50 to 60% of our business and rest will be new products that we bring in okay uh, you know quick commerce has been mainly been successful in metro cities how does big basket plan to overcome the challenges of expanding quick commerce to non metro areas you are present in 25 uh, tier uh, two cities uh, but you know how do you overcome this challenge no, so we've already expanded to non metro so we are not a metro player uh, we are actually you know uh, currently as we speak um, in 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 close to about 25 plus cities in tier 2 itself right uh, in addition to 10 cities that we are in tier 1 so we are in 35 uh, 35 40 cities already and we'll 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 be careful about that we need to because one of the things that the quick commerce business needs uh, because uh, of of the slightly lower average order values is basically high density right and that's what we need to do and so as you go to smaller towns it gets thinner and that can impact profitability so we'll be careful in terms of choosing towns but as we speak itself um, you know, we are in upwards of 35 to 40 cities, uh, you know, already. All right. Uh, Mr. Menon, if you could share any insights or preliminary results from the ongoing test of the rapid delivery in Bengaluru, how will these results influence the nationwide rollout? See, essentially, it's two businesses coming together. So, you know, what, what you, if we were doing 100 rupees worth of business, now it's, now it's 200, 250 rupees, uh, you know, that we are doing, right? It's just... It's just it's just more than doubled uh, from from uh, you know from what we were doing in the quick commerce space. So that's what we're doing. We're seeing it in uh, in in the in the early um, thing. Big essentially, it's both those customers now uh, their business comes together into 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 one interface. And uh, our initial um, you know results we've just piloted this in a uh, in a, in in one area in Bangalore, but we are rapidly rapidly expanding now because for us. This expansion is uh, is just was just a matter of the tech to be ready and the technology to be ready, which is ready now, which we deployed. Now it's a question of just scaling it across the country. All right. And we are seeing all the benefits that we wanted and we and we were expecting, which is both the businesses coming together. That's holding our average order value. Um, you know, which for a quick commerce business uh, itself will be upwards of a thousand rupees, which is which is which is absolutely fantastic and amazing. And we are hoping to hold on to that. Um, uh, which is what will make the business profitable much faster. All right. One final question before I let you go. How does Big Basket plan to meet the growing demand for consumer goods, especially with the strategy that you mentioned of linking multiple dark stores in a cluster with a central uh, warehouse? So what we're going to do is we are going to have um, you know uh, this this seven hundred odd dark stores, uh, which is which is going to be delivering in ten minutes. We are also going to have uh, uh, you know a network of of a few large warehouses where we will stock you know some of these high value uh, long tail uh, products right which which will get delivered in 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 about 25 to 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes and we will have about 60 of them across the country and so we will we will stock some of the high end products uh, expensive products uh, which necessarily will not be there in all 700 stores we will stock in these stores so you'll have a cluster of this store plus a set of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, dark stores which will what will serve the customer so the customer sees inventory lying in this large store as well as the dark store attached to the customer well, Ari, many thanks for joining us on Startup Street today. Wish you the very best uh, with your full tip towards uh, quick commerce. Again, thank you so much.